Hello guys! Today's video is about 10 of my favourite films. Now, I can already hear a certain percentage of you going, what does this have to do with music? Why is she uploading this? And another percentage of you are going, well, of course, it's just because they have great soundtracks, blah, 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 it's just this, it's just that. And you'd be right, to an extent, which is why I wanted to make this video. Of course, to talk about the soundtracks within those films, but another very important aspect to me personally that I find when it comes to making music, and that is how totally non-musical things can turn themselves into music. At least they do to me, and I know a few other people that find the same. And I'm very interested to hear if any of you guys have the same kind of experience. Um, I've spoken about this a couple of times kind of in previous videos with more vague things like, oh, I, I think a piece of art can become a, a piece of music, or I listen to the sound of the trees and make music based upon that. Of course, I find inspiration for music in all walks of life that are just not music related at all. And I know lots and lots of people do, I'm not particularly special in doing that, but I don't hear it talked about very often. And I especially don't hear this talked about in the context of films and the people or characters within those films kind of turning themselves into music in the sense of being a piece of music, of course, outside the soundtrack and just kind of becoming its own thing. So, without further ado, uh, number one film that I want to talk about. These are not in any kind of order, they're just films that I absolutely love. There's so many I'd love to talk about but I've narrowed it down to ten. Um, number one, first one I want to talk about is of course Doctor Strange Love. I'm sure many of you already guessed that. Um, this is probably one of my favourite films of all time and probably ever will be and it's a film that my dad first showed me as a kid because I was terrified of nuclear bombs and he was like oh check out this film it's called how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb and uh, I was like oh great it's gonna make me kind of like not be scared of nuclear war and it didn't <laughs> it terrified me and I kind of I didn't get get it exactly and I think I was a bit too young to kind of fully understand and then for some reason something in my brain a few years down the line kind of about I'd say when I was about 13 or 14 possibly in my brain went, need to watch that film. I think that's quite a good film actually. I have no idea what made that happen. So I watched it, it made a lot more sense, I got the humour and honestly it became instantly one of my all time favourite films and continues to be so now. Uh, I'm 23 now so it's been quite a while, <laughs> about 10 years maybe. Um, but. A lot of you have probably seen already that I did a song dedicated to this film called Strange Love. Now, I wouldn't say this sounds anything like what is in the soundtrack, so I can't really say that I drew the music from that film into the song that I made. There are certain aspects that I tried to incorporate, like I incorporated an old radio sound that I played through the pickups on my bass that was kind of like meant to sound like a radio chatter through a kind of old-fashioned radio maybe to signify them in the plane talking to each other or whatever you would like to be like it to be I kind of imagine it as um, just post apocalypse where someone's broadcasting but it's kind of all disheveled and not really coming through properly but anyway it's whatever you want it to be um, it doesn't sound anything like the music that is in that film, so the question is, how did it come to be and what makes it still, to me, feel as though it belongs as a part of that film, as a relation to that film? So one of the biggest things that I find is, one, the world, I kind of, when I watch a film and I really get into it, I'm sure pretty much all of you can probably relate to this, I really get immersed in the world and kind of almost my brain can take it further than it maybe even goes in the film of it it's like it starts with the idea that's in the film and then my brain just goes oh all of this and the film becomes so much more than even what you see on the screen and then of course I start getting other musical ideas that are like 
just whatever comes to mind how so how can i incorporate this idea that i think would be part of this film's universe and turn it into a song to kind of make it bring it to light if that makes sense and give it a platform give it a uh, just a way to be and so part of that is obviously thinking of sounds that i think should, should kind of signify what are in the film or what's in my head that would be in the film like the radio chatter signifying certain things but also just what are the emotions that are within the film that aren't necessarily reflected in the soundtrack or maybe they are but there are other kinds of emotions that could also come through and be reflected in a different way so i'll try and draw on those emotions that i think fit within that film's universe at least they do in my head uh, whether they do to you is totally up to you but again it's all down to the individual and how you feel about the piece of music you're making and what it means to you but oh that's kind of one of the things that i'll i draw on is just kind of the world how does it feel what what lies beyond the limits of that film so this is the film and then this part all of this is kind of what your brain creates outside of the film so how can you draw on all of that bring it back to the film and kind of make it relate as a piece of music and then kind of bring it to life so there's obviously that aspect the other thing is the characters so <laughs> to me again with the characters the characters are what they are and then in my head you kind of get a feel for oh well this person is this type of way or they have this kind of personality or would they do this would they do that they kind of become a lot more to me than what they are just on the screen so it's all kind of within the realms of the character but i feel like my brain and probably yours tends to build off of the information you're given and create a wider picture of who that person is so that naturally if you are musically inclined does tend to kind of incorporate itself into music itself so to me um dr strange love the character and all of the characters within that film are kind of there's a bit of humor very dark humor um they're all a little bit unhinged no one in that film is really exactly kind of a stable person to be in the making the decisions that they are making um <laughs> and they're kind of like i would call them humorously diabolical so that's the kind of feeling that i tried to get across within the song i tried to incorporate that kind of emotion in the song same with dr strange love himself i tried to get a bit of that kind of unhingedness but with a little hint of humor in places and kind of other than that the just the extremely dark nature of the topic because it's not a happy topic it's funny in the way it's told but the topic itself is very very dark um but it's also got quite a gritty nature so i try to incorporate that into the song it's quite intense like you can imagine if you were in the situation that you would be in in that film of you've got a limited amount of time or the world is literally going to explode and there's all this mis miscommunication going on you can imagine the intensity that would be going on in those characters minds and in in that universe the feeling that would be going around within that war room so that's another thing i kind of tried to encapsulate in that film but on the other hand obviously i also tried to encapsulate after the end of the film obviously spoilers when everything went wrong when it didn't work when the world would have literally have been ended um there are certain aspects of the song the whole thing in itself kind of could be a, a broadcast or a feeling of pre world ending it's got that kind of like desolate lonely dark feeling but especially at the end of the song where i used the polara to create that kind of breathing effect um to me it sounds like a mix of 
how you would think had you survived or if i highly doubt that would be possible but it's kind of like if a little bit of your consciousness had survived and was kind of in this world that suddenly plunged into darkness and nothing exists anymore and there's just nothing basically it's kind of that final thought breathing sound but also the last breaths of the world maybe of like the world was this living thing and now we've blown it up and it's kind of taking its last few breaths and then that's it it's done but there are all sorts of things it could have been um it could also to me sounds kind of like the wind so after that happened any kind of breeze or anything but there's nothing else on the planet it's just a really lonely desolate kind of sound so there's all of these different angles that you can come at with music that don't necessarily just come from another piece of music so drawing on stuff like that to me is really important and it's a massive kind of part of like well who i am and who i am as a musician and my music so that's of course a pretty major one because i love that song i'll put a link to the song in the description i love that film i should say i will put a link to my song in the description but hopefully i've kind of managed to explain this so far in a way that makes sense so i won't spend this long on every single film i just wanted to get that kind of general idea of why i'm making this video out there so with a few other aspects to come along so film number two is die hard and die hard with a vengeance because to me i'll just kind of consider them as one massive long film um of course they have absolutely great soundtracks they have great great characters as well there's all these different kinds of feelings and i love kind of looking at hans gruber thinking what the hell was his upbringing and what goes on in his mind because he's such an intelligent character and so is simon gruber his brother um they're just fascinating to me to kind of think what's the inner working of their mind and on the other hand you've got john mcclain who is also a very intelligent character but in a kind of more lucky slightly kind of less finessed kind of a way so they're two really interesting types of intelligence going on there that i like to kind of figure out well what makes the difference why are they what makes that character think the way they do and what makes the rest of their personality that way and how do you get that across in a piece of music so how does it make me feel if i was trying to write a song about john mclean i'd want it to have a kind of air of intelligence about it but not so much so that it becomes kind of clinical and ends up feeling more like a hans or simon gruber type of intelligence <laughs> so playing around with ideas like that are a really really fun thing to do and to kind of like come at an idea of something so intelligence being the idea make a song about that gives an air of intelligence but then within those ideas there are other aspects so little offshoots like are they more clinically intelligent like hans gruber or are they more kind of lucky intelligent like john mclean so stuff like that is really fun to play around with i'd definitely recommend having a go at trying trying to capture those different nuances if you can but the other thing is so there are certain aspects of some characters that to me i find very inspiring that help me with my music in a different way so obviously on the one hand you've got like oh well how do they think and if they were a musician then how would they play and what would that make them play so there's that aspect and i kind of try to get inside their heads and it makes me play differently so there's like a myriad of characters that i absolutely love all different types of people and when i feel i'm kind of inside of their heads i find that i play i have different ideas t different types of ideas and creative outlets wi just within music even and in life in general that kind of tend to come out or express themselves in different ways and they get me interested in different things different genres different artists different even stuff outside of music um so that's kind of one thing but 
The other thing is obviously music is not just all about playing. Um, depending on what your goals are within the, mu within the music industry, there will be other nerve-wracking things that you'll have to do at some point and you'll have to find your own individual ways of coping with them. So one of mine is that I draw inspiration from certain characters. So like Hans Gruber, I know he's a pretty horrible guy, but he's very interesting, he's very intelligent, he's very collected, he knows what he's doing and he stays calm generally within situations. So just using him as an example, when I went to Malta, um, that was one of the most outrageous things I've ever done for me. Now I've done it. I'm the type of person where I'll do something once and then I'm kind of okay, or I'll do it a few times and I'm okay. I, it feels like it opens up the world even more. And it's just another step on the ladder and I can keep doing bigger and bigger things if required. So that helped, but what really got me through it as well as my own personal coping mechanisms outside of this was kind of thinking of Hans Gruber and the fact that he's a very worldly cultured guy and if something goes horribly wrong what would he do how would he stay calm how would he think and overcome that and I find for me personally this is a very very effective way for me to kind of get through things because one I like thinking about things that I enjoy, it, it makes me happy and it calms me down and I just, I like it, it makes me feel a lot more ready to face the world. But on the other hand as well, because I get such terrible anxiety, being able to kind of put myself in someone else's shoes and take bits of aspects of how they think and try and apply them to myself and the way I interact with the world and go about doing things has been really really helpful so it's it's good in that way as well because music does often require you to do things that are out of your comfort zone that aren't necessarily always playing so again kind of getting in different character shoes for different uh like things that you might need to do i always find they can the right characters seem to come to me at the right kind of times and relate to whatever i'm doing but that is another aspect and Stuff like that is another reason why I absolutely love those films because John McClane, to me, it seems like a lovely guy, is very inspiring and he can get through anything. Hans Gruber, very, very interesting, very intelligent. He knows what he's doing and he tends to stay calm. Uh, so if something goes wrong, <laughs> try not to panic. Um, that was what I kept telling myself. And obviously Simon Gruber, very, very cool character, very extremely intelligent. Um, got a bit of a humour about him as well but just all of these aspects I find go into making my music what it is but also my music career and my life what it is obviously I'm always true to who I am but I find that I can see bits of myself in certain characters and then build on those or temporarily kind of put myself in their shoes in order to get me through whatever situation I might need that for. Usually music related. <laughs> um, so that is something that I think is worth keeping in mind. So that is film number two. I know it's technically two films, but it's one long film, same universe basically. Um, film number three is Inglorious Bastards, and no, I'm not swearing YouTube. The film name is spelt differently, so don't get me. Um, this is obviously a Quentin Tarantino film. I love a lot of his films, and the soundtracks are amazing. Um, both the songs that he chooses to go in those films, and also the stuff that in some of his later films Ennio Morricone has written for those films, like this one. Ennio Morricone did the soundtrack to Inglorious Bastards and it's amazing and I love Ennio Morricone so it's a bonus. Um, going back again to that kind of intelligent character thing, in again a similar vein but he's got his own ways is of course Hans Lander. He again has been someone that 
although obviously is a horrible person, <laughs> um, there are certain aspects of him that I've been able to kind of draw on to help me think in a different way in order to get through a situation or even to come up with a different piece of music. So I've kind of thought, well, what kind of music does someone like that listen to? Because he's kind of, not only is he horrible and he has a horrible job, but he's so horrible that he doesn't even care about his job. He just does it for his own gain. And I don't know which is worse, but it's kind of an amusing thing to me to think, what does that person like? If, if Do they even like music? I bet he probably would because of the time period he lives in it was quite a big thing in the circles he'd be mixing in so what would he have liked is there a way to incorporate that character into a song and how can i draw on it musically to create something totally different and that kind of encapsulates that feeling <laughs> So it's just something I enjoy. It doesn't matter if the character is god awful, horrible, or the loveliest human ever. I just, I find people's minds really, really interesting. And I like kind of thinking about how they are outside of just what you see within the film and building off that, building off the world. Uh, and the same goes for Shrijana in the, in the film. From her perspective, how would you make a piece of music? What kind of music would she like? how would you encapsulate her awful situation into a song and do it justice because obviously it's an important thing to actually kind of get right and a topic to be kind of respected i guess it is feels like the right word but yeah so inglorious bastards has been massively inspiring to me on many levels um and I think it's really funny as well. Some of the humour in it is great. But big uh, Tarantino fan anyway, so kind of goes without saying. But next film is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. So ever since I was probably about two years old, maybe even younger, I forget when the first film came out, I've absolutely adored Harry Potter. I grew up with them. To kind of from the start of the films because that was when they were coming out and I kind of grew up as they were coming out so they've played a massive role in my life again going back to that thing yes I'm wearing pajamas and yes they're Harry Potter pajamas um going back to that thing of drawing on characters to get you through situations um Harry Potter has played a big role in that actually and doing that has played a big role in my life thinking now i'm just now realizing this in the past so obviously you start school over in england when you're four um i absolutely hated school i always hated it and probably always will and it did me absolutely no favors so i'm very grateful that i was able to be kind of informally home educated because it was what suited me i just don't work well in a school environment and i don't work well learning in that way unless i'm ready to learn in that way so there's that but i was massively unhappy at school the teachers weren't particularly nice neither were a lot of the kids um and at about four years old, I did my first school day in a Harry Potter cloak. And that gave me a lot of comfort. And even then I remember thinking, what would Harry Potter do? Oh, I'm like Harry Potter going to school. And uh, even the bits in the films with Draco where he's kind of being a bit bullied, my, my brain was kind of going, right, if someone's horrible to me, well, he's always okay, so I'll be okay. And I could kind of like draw on it as a source of comfort. So thinking, yeah, I've, I've always kind of put myself in certain characters' shoes to get me through life situations. Um, <coughs> but going back to the actual films, of course they have incredible soundtracks and they make me really emotional because they're just ingrained in my mind from such a young age. Uh, they've had several writers and all of them have done an amazing job on the soundtracks, but they're just the perfect example of capturing not only the essence of a character 
but also the essence of the characters within that universe and also the essence of the universe itself and everything that lies outside of what you're being allowed to see. I think they do that perfectly. So that in itself is really inspiring. Also, the characters within those films are really inspiring. Um, Draco actually, weirdly, is one of my favourite characters along with Snape and um, Sirius Black, all these different kind of characters that aren't necessarily people's favourites, but I guess a lot of people love Snape, he's got a bit of a fan club, including my mum. Um, but yeah, so again, there are loads of characters to draw on within those films of different types of weird, quirky characteristics and how you can apply them to music or get in their heads and apply that into your music as well. Uh, but I've chosen the Half-Blood Prince because one, I don't know, it's kind of impossible to choose a ha favourite Harry Potter film. Two, it's my sister's favourite one and it reminds me of her and I just like things that remind me of my family. <laughs> it's a nice memory and we used to play the Harry Potter game together, the Half-Blood Prince one, and it was hilarious. But I also grew up with the Harry Potter games, the original PS2 ones and PS1 games, and the soundtracks to those also have been massively, massively inspiring, so there is that aspect as well. But I have a whole video about why I love video game music, which I'll put a link for also in the description. But yeah, chose the Half-Blood Prince because it's really dark, it's got some hilarious humour, <laughs> both dark and light. Um, the way it's done, I love the story, there's kind of like, almost feels like two halves to the film. That is like, the film is like one way, and then as soon as you reach the latter half of the film, it feels like a slightly different film, but not in a disjointed way. So just really, really love that film, love the feeling it gives me. Um, next film is a slightly different one. It is Pink Panther A Shot in the Dark, so it's the second film in the Pink Panther series with Peter Sellers, another Peter Sellers film. Um, those films to me are hysterical, the second one is my favourite, I just think the humour is so funny in it. Um, Cluzo is such a relatably clumsy character that I just think, he. how can you not love him? I love him. Uh, I love the way he kind of deals with situations as well because although he is very clumsy he always seems to manage to be okay um which in a way is kind of inspiring i guess but he's just a really lovable character uh they've got some great soundtracks as well but also again getting into the mind of someone like that who is so daft is really funny and can make for some really amusing pieces of music um, not to mention his violin playing skills, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely love that film, R reminds me of my parents and my grandparents, so yeah, very sentimental as well, but just a really feel-good film to me, I absolutely love it. I love the whole series, but the first two, especially the second one, are my favourites, so not too much more to say about that one, just it's one of my favourite films. Um, Next film is The Matrix, so the original Matrix. Now, I remember when I was younger, I used to love these films and watched them and didn't really fully grasp the concept, the full concept of what was going on in terms of like the Matrix itself, if that makes sense. So I remember kind of having a fairly good grasp of the film, but not the one major point which is when you realise Neo wakes up and he's actually been asleep in that pod the entire time. So when I got a little bit older and I watched that film and suddenly my brain clicked, I almost had to stop watching because my brain was like, that's terrifying! What's it? What if that's happening right now? And um, it just kind of gave me a slight existential crisis, but Obviously, it didn't take me very long to get over that, but it was just kind of that, that was how mind blown I was when I realised that twist. But the whole thing about that film series, especially the first one and the last one, I think are my two favourites, just 
the imagery is stunning as well and even in terms of like stage gear so again music related i've taken a lot of inspiration from the kind of matrix wardrobe shall we say and just kind of i just think the imagery is amazing and there's a lot to be taken from it or inspired by when it comes to not only making a piece of music but also the stuff surrounding that piece of music so the artwork etc obviously i'm not saying rip off the matrix but there are certain feelings within that film that it evokes and certain topics that can be drawn on in their own original way but still feel give you that same kind of feeling and that to me is also really inspiring again of course getting inside the characters heads making a song out of a kind of a story that's that mental or a concept that that is is that mental is quite a fun challenge to me so again similar kind of thing um next film is terminator 2 now obviously that is just one of the coolest films ever made sarah connor is just one of the best female characters but characters in general ever she's just so cool she's like she knows what she's doing she's got control of the situation she just is what she is she's just awesome and the same goes obviously with the terminator he's just amazing um but also with the t1000 so i've actually nicknamed my cat t1000 because he's a bit mental and when he runs he's just like he'll just go he's like the t1000 so and he's liquid <laughs> cats are liquid but again that film the soundtrack's great um i've definitely taken inspiration from the soundtrack of that and that kind of like barren feeling that it gives you but also the characters within that are really inspiring of course sarah connor of course the other two as well so you got arnold schwarzenegger's character the terminator and the t1000 as well there are things that i have been able to draw on with all of these characters that have helped me get through certain situations um obviously the, the terminator and the t1000 they're both of robotic thinking so <laughs> they're not necessarily the most useful way to be as of kind of all the time because people aren't robots but there are certain aspects to that kind of thinking that can be really really helpful especially when getting through certain situations it helps i found it helped me to just kind of be able to buckle down and go right this is what needs to be done this is how i do it this is what i'm doing these are the steps I need to do it and I, that's what I'm going to do and I'm just going to keep walking keep doing that so again stuff like that has been really helpful to me so absolutely love that film uh, next film is Kill Bill another awesome character um, obviously don't want to spoil the entire film because her name is kind of a bit of a spoiler but the main character played by Uma Thurman she's just absolutely awesome uh, so many cool characters in that film aside from that as well great great soundtrack really interesting storyline i just absolutely love it i don't have too much to say about it other than it's awesome and musically again the concepts are a really inspiring thing to go through so kill bill love it um next one have a bit more to say about this one is war of the worlds the 2005 one yes the tom cruise one i am talking about that one um so i know a lot of people really don't like this film but for me i absolutely love it and there are a lot of memories attached to it so <coughs> outside of the obviously a lot of you probably already know and i spoke about it in my five of my favorite albums thing jeff wayne's musical war of the worlds that is and has been for most of my life one of the biggest inspirational and biggest musical loves of my life and it still is today i've just gotten so many hours of enjoyment so much inspiration from that and so many nightmares <laughs> but in a good 
way, in a good way. The artwork and everything is just stunning, but the whole world and kind of being able to listen and go into that world. But obviously this isn't just about the musical version of that. <coughs> I first discovered the musical one when I was about two, just if you don't know, two or three, something like that. And uh, I had just happened to hear it out and about in public uh, when I was on holiday and I said to my dad, what's that? Because it caught my attention and my dad thankfully knew what it was and he went and bought me the cassette of it because all we had in the car at the time was a cassette player and I just listened to it non-stop over and over and over again and did my sister's head in um, and I still listen to it non-stop over and over and over again so not a lot has changed <laughs> um, but yeah that has been a massive inspiration to me and so when I got a bit older and heard the film was coming out, obviously I was like, oh, I like the musical. I think I would like to watch the film. So my dad very kindly bought it for me on DVD and it terrified me. <laughs> I was literally terrified of the film, but I will never ever forget that experience of watching it for the first time because I so wanted to watch it because I loved the story and I loved the music. Um, that I just, I forced myself through it, even though I was terrified. And I look back on that really, really fondly. And I've watched it so many times since. And I know there are so many scary films out there and there are some seriously awesome scary films out there. But to me, I'm pretty terrified of aliens in that sense of kind of end of the world aliens taking over thing the whole concept of that film and to me personally the way that film is done the way it builds up that tension just fills me with such a horrible sense of dread and that film has so many things in it that play on my own personal fears and things that make me really uncomfortable like the sound during that plane crash scene or the train going past on fire they all play on my mind in certain ways and the same thing where the martians are coming through the trees but the trees are lit up and just kind of shaking slightly and it's not yet revealed what it is it's just the whole claustrophobic all encompassing uh, feeling of the film and kind of the, it this is something bigger than you can comprehend and you can't get away from it it's like it's such a sickening feeling but I absolutely love the film and there aren't many films that make me feel as strongly as that one does. So for me personally, I love the film. And of course, musically, they have been, that whole story has been a massive inspiration to me. So I look upon that film very, very fondly, personally. Um, and the last one is a slightly different film. Uh, that is How to Train Your Dragon. So I remember this coming out when I think I was about nine, which feels weird to say because in my head it's still a fairly new film, <laughs> but I guess it's not really. Um, the characters in that, I, I remember going to the cinema to see it and again, I watched it and Hiccup himself, the main character, and the character of Astrid both massively inspired me and kind of gave me a bit of a confidence boost because Hiccup's quite awkward but he's actually awesome and Astrid is really quite a badass she knows what she's doing and she's very kind of she just she's strong-willed and she knows exactly where she's going and what she wants and how to get it and she was just very inspiring to me so there was kind of two aspects there of Hiccup being that more kind of naive but so, like very he's very clever but he doesn't necessarily know how to get his what he wants across maybe i'm the same i don't know hopefully not <laughs> hopefully i'm doing a good enough job here but the whole story of that is really nostalgic to me um i remember seeing it and it will always remind me of going to watch it with my mum and it reminds me of my family and just kind of growing up and kind of pretending I was in that world and just the whole kind of thing around it of the dragons and the vikings and everything like that but also the soundtracks of course so 
there's one in particular in that film that to me is very sentimental so the whole film itself is but it's called forbidden friendship and for some reason that was the track that always stuck in my head um and when i listen to it it still makes me emotional it's just the perfect song for capturing a forbidden friendship that like if you wanted to do that that song is it for what the situation is in that film it's just the perfect example of taking all the kind of nuance and different aspects and problems occurring around this one friendship and how it kind of comes to be anyway and how you kind of get that across so I absolutely love the whole soundtrack but that one in particular also the film soundtrack is written by a guy called John Powell no he's not my dad although my dad is also John Powell but no we're not the same John Powell <laughs> so just want to get that out there because I have been asked that no that's not him um but he's equally as cool but yeah so those are 10 of my favorite films I think that was 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 yep definitely 10 um <laughs> there are a couple of others that are in my favourite kind of lists of films but I haven't mentioned them in this one as an actual kind of runner on the list because one of them is The Wall which is obviously Pink Floyd's film ab adaptation of The Wall album which again is one of my all-time favourite albums um, and goes way beyond kind of I get lost in the world when I listen to that album the world of the story and the characters in it what's going on in their heads especially Pink the main character and just the whole thing of how they managed to get across all the emotions musically but um there's that but obviously the film itself is kind of one big musical film so I wanted to kind of focus on the ones that are more film orientated rather than music orientated just because I want to talk about the different aspects and ways that totally non-musical things can inspire you musically not just in your playing but also in your career and the way you go about doing certain things within your career but I do want to mention it The Wall is an absolutely fantastic film in my eyes I just love it and it's a big comfort to me the same goes for Tommy by The Who, their album and the film. Again, goes way beyond what you see. I've got this whole like universe in my head and all the characters and everything. And I love kind of imagining how do things lead to this? What, like, what, what's this character? What does he think? And etc. the same with The Wall. So those are two kind of honorable mentions, but I didn't want to put them on just because they are purely music related. So, I have a question for all of you. Um, what are some of your favourite films? And also, what are some similar films to the ones I mentioned that you think I might like? So what are your film recommendations for me as well? Either based off character, story, or fe general feelings, whatever. Just a film you think I might like, or a film you think is similar to ones I've mentioned drop me your suggestions please because I'm always up for discovering new things but yeah I would also love to hear about your personal favourites also how they may have helped you in your life either musically or getting through certain situations or playing wise or inspired songs etc just any of it just let me know your thoughts basically so I think that's enough waffling for today Thank you so, so much for watching. Um, I'll put a link to my band camp in the description if you would like to hear some of my original music. Again, I'll put a link to the song Strange Love and also my video game music video as well. Um, also, if you would like to support the channel further, obviously my supporting me on Bandcamp massively helps, but also I have a Patreon if you feel so inclined. That is massively, massively appreciated. Again, link in the description, but no pressure whatsoever. So hopefully this has been kind of enjoyable and insightful and maybe offered a bit of a 
insight into the way my own mind works and also maybe you've watched this and gone wow I really relate to that I, I've never known anyone else to think that way because it's always nice when that happens and I love hearing other people talk about stuff and it's like whoa I didn't know other people felt that way so maybe that has happened to you let me know any thoughts you would like to share with me but yeah thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time bye